Hello everyone. This is the story of how Magdala's Sculpture 2 assignment turned into a bronze monument to Mother Adelaide. My name is Patrick and I'm the Sculpture Instructor at Lourdes University. Using reference photos for guidance, Magdala has begun shaping the foam. I suggested using foam because it's easy to carve and it will keep the weight down, but it is a bit messy. Outside of class, Magla did a portrait bust of Mother Adelaide, and so instead of reinventing the wheel, I had her make a mold and then cast a plaster that we can attach to this later, and that's what you see there. I also had Magla do two life-size, two-scale drawings that she could use to measure and also as a visual reference. It's now the spring semester of 2018. The weather's getting nicer, so we've opened the studio doors and we're looking forward to working outside. We put a veil on her to get an idea of how the fabric was going to lay and also to give us uh, something to look forward to. We cast Magdala's hands in alginate to use those, especially the one holding the pot. A funny story when she showed Sister Jane Mary, she said, Oh, he really does know what he's doing. <laughs> I just think that's hilarious. We're now into the spring semester of 2018, and it's really just been a class project so far. I've been helping out, you know, three, six hours a week, but it's a class project. We had to hose this thing down with water daily. So working outside was really a bonus. Without water, the new plaster won't stick. And when you have the opportunity to see this, why would you want to work inside? Yeah, they're definitely smaller than those other two. Here's the bust that uh, Magdala made with uh, the silicone being applied, making the mold. Boom, just like that. And Magdala, <laughs> I love how she does stuff. I had Magdala add wire to the face casting and then we ran that wire through some tubes right there, those four black holes, those are tubes, and then just twisted the wire in the back. Worked out great. It held it on very securely, but we were still able to position the face how we wanted it. Mother Adelaide now has a face permanently plastered to her body. Magdala begins the evergreen and we make a mold. I will tell you a story. <laughs> At the second sculpture class, after I had confirmed my project idea, Patrick asked if I was going to welch. I said, no, and I will tell you, 
Patrick never welched, not even once. <laughs> Patrick is passionate, creative, and knows a lot about art and the process of art. He is a teacher and partner that Mother Adelaide would look upon with favor. Oh, thanks, Magdala. You're the best. Funny story about the bed there. I had pulled the frame out of the dumpster, I don't know, a couple months before we even started this, I think. I was going to chop it up for the metal. When I looked at it again and I started thinking, man, if we just had a mattress, we could lay Mother Adelaide on that and it would be a lot easier to work on a lot larger area. And Magdala says, well, I think I can get a mattress. And I said, yeah, whatever, Magdala, and darned if you... <laughs> she got a mattress. So now Magdala has turned into my scrounger. That's right outside the studio window. I was glad we were able to lay Mother Adelaide down. Trying to work on the veil if she was standing up would have been a real, uh, well, let's just say it would have been a drag. So things are looking pretty good, and one day Magdala says, Hey, uh, if, if I got funding, do you think we could turn this into a bronze? And I said, Sure, Magdala. About a week later, she says, Hey, I got the funding. And I said, Shit. We're going to have to step up our game. The cleaning crew really must have hated us. Filling holes was never ending. You won. What'd you win? Check you out. The sun was making the tools hot, so I made an awning. They were there almost every day that we worked. So I had to make a couple of tools to get some plaster behind the neck, that one, and then to work on the plaster once it was there with that little chisel there. I suppose the caterpillar turning into a butterfly is the analogy of a Sculpture II project turning into a bronze monument to Mother Adelaide.
yeah, 24. And it was right about this time that Magdala brought me on full time to take it from a Sculpture 2 project to a monument worthy of Mother Adelaide. That's the reason I was busting that part away so that we could make the scapular come away from the gown. Here I'm using a plastic tub that has been cut up to use as a form to keep the plaster fabric of the scapular away from the body. It worked out great. Even Mother Adelaide thought so. Summer of 2019 and we've been soaking up the sun. Now that Mother Adelaide is going to be a bronze, we've decided to make some changes. We're going to change the folds in the sleeve to give them more of a smoother, natural flow. And uh, we'll do some work on the scapular as well. That plastic tub really did come in handy. Using the foam was great for making changes like that, but there were times when we would just be scraping it back and, and we would just break through, like there. It was, it was super aggravating. It's August 12th of 2019, and this is our progress so far. Things have been moving a lot faster since we've been able to work on it full time for the last few months, and things are looking pretty good. Should have the plaster done in a couple of weeks. That was a totally unplanned moment. I can't believe I got it, but it sums up everything. Here we're beginning to rebuild the corner of the scapular so that it will fly away from the gown. I've applied a thin layer of plaster over the plastic form, let it set up, and now all I have to do is trim the side and thin the wall. I got a pretty nice tan out of the deal too. I love my son.
Ah, foam. Here I used a plastic bag to protect the hand from the fresh plaster of the sleeve. Kinda looks like a dragon, don't it? Well, we're getting pretty close and Magdala is just kinda giving her the once over just to see what we gotta finish up. Magdala working on the final details. It's now early September of 2019 and we are finally finished with the plaster. Let me give you a 360 walk around of the finished Mother Adelaide in the plaster. Or as I like to say, in the white. Today, I'm honored and humbled to have been on the creating and sculpting end of this project. Me too, Magdala. Thank you. We had a bit of a soiree so that the sisters, faculty, and staff could see Mother Adelaide in the white before she headed to the foundry. Oh, Mother Adelaide. Sister Magdala and me. Title. The shellac is used to seal the plaster for the mold making process. And you know, I think we can all benefit from a good shellacking at some point in our life. I know I have. Kind of looks like a lollipop, don't it? Mother Adelaide dries after a couple of coats of amber shellac while Magdala finishes up the last few pieces. This will be the last time that these two see us working on Mother Adelaide. It's September 26th of 2019 and Mother Adelaide is now off to Flatlander's Foundry. Thank you. 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 Thank you.
Yeah, we don't want to cut into his lunchtime. Oh, <laughs> Pat. No, 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 no. no. This guy's hungry. Here's Mother Adelaide with the first coat of rubber. This is the only time where I kind of thought she looked sad. Here's Ian working on the mother mold. A mother mold holds the rubber rigid so that when you apply the wax it will maintain the shape of the original form. Well, the original plaster is a little worse for wear, but we'll be able to patch her up. We're checking out the molds with Sister Jane Mary. Several of the mold pieces behind Mother Adelaide. Here we are signing the wax, the last thing to do before the wax goes into the shell cycle. Here's Sister Jane Mary laying out the letters for the base, which she called big. <laughs> I think it's funny, this coming from a woman who does 40 by 60 foot ceramic murals on buildings. <laughs> I love this woman. This is Mother Adelaide early in the shell cycle. The shells have been burned out, the bronze has been melted at over 2,100 degrees, and Ken and crew are ready to pour. That was two of 27 pieces that have now been welded together. Here's Magdala showing Ken where she'd like the hand placed on the rosary before it is welded on. Mother Adelaide now weighs about 500 pounds and requires a crane to be lifted.
Now let's take a tour of the surface of Mother Adelaide. These welds and imperfections are just a portion of what will have to be cleaned up using a die grinder with sanding and grinding discs. Oh, I mean an angle grinder. And then we'll use a die grinder too. I saw this and said, well, Magdala, you're done. Can't have you hurting yourself. So it's me and Mother Adelaide to burn the midnight oil. I tend to be a little more productive at night anyway. So we decided that working after hours would probably be best. Ken was more than cool and gave me the keys to the shop. So I'd show up there just as they were getting ready to leave and I'd Burn the midnight oil. So I'd work until midnight, sometimes two o'clock in the morning, and I figured these guys didn't want to listen to me grinding all day. Here's another example of some of the finer details that had to be cleaned up. Even though it's tucked away, it's still important. I was alone, so I had to take pictures of myself. The sun was coming in the garage door, and as I walked in front of Mother Adelaide, I saw this. Kind of otherworldly, don't you think? Looks like it's starting to get pretty late. So experience tells me that when metal turns blue, it's hot. My inquisitive mind says, how hot is blue? Taking a smoke break. I know, but I couldn't help myself. This beautiful sunset taken from the garage door of Flatlanders is a beautiful way to end this chapter of our story. Yeah, Mother Adelaide has been sandblasted and things look great. I'm really happy. And Magdala did just a wonderful job with Mother Adelaide's portrait. I'm proud of her.
When we considered the site of where Mother Adelaide was going to be placed, outside of the Portsiungla Chapel, with the woods as a backdrop, we thought that a blue-green patina would probably be best. One of the beloved stories of the Sisters of St. Francis from 1916 is that of the evergreen. In a response to a letter from Mother Adelaide to the School of Agriculture at Ohio State University, Mother Adelaide received 1,000 sapling evergreens. The purpose was to hold down the sandy soil of the poor farmland that she had purchased right here in Sylvania. Behold, the evergreens came with instructions. Number one, plant the seedlings six inches apart. Number two, make the rows two feet apart. Number three, after two years, move out two and keep one. Number four, continue. Number three, until all trees are comfortably spaced. I believe it was the clearest instruction she ever received. The process was successful beyond her greatest dreams. The evergreen rooted in yellow sand has become, as Mother Justinian wrote of Mother Adelaide, a telling symbol of her life, character, and personality. The evergreens still surround us today. They serve in symbol of the religious community she founded those 105 years ago. And they are a consistent image with our written mission statement today. As we say, we commit ourselves to joyful servanthood among the people as messengers of peace, committed to works that reverence human dignity, embrace the poor and marginalized, and respect all creation. Today, she is among us. A bronze sculpture seems a fitting way to remember the legacy of Mother Mary Adelaide Sandusky and pay it forward. The same spirit that lives in her lives in each of us today as we reach out and do what is right and good with God's nurturing grace. I photoshopped Mother Adelaide in so that we could see what she would look like on site. Here's Magdala, and the ladies from Alverno Studio are getting ready to set the tiles. We went with a stone pattern in the concrete so that it would mimic the stonework of Portsianco Chapel. Here are Hans and Bridget setting the tiles into the concrete base. Sister Jane Mary keeping an eye on things. Magdal is excited. The end is near. It looks like even Mother Adelaide's happy about it. Circumstances beyond Magdala's and my control, it was decided to go with more of a traditional patina. Mother Adelaide was installed on the campus of the Sisters of St. Francis Lord's University, just outside the Port Siancla Chapel on January 13th. 2021 
Mother Adelaide has been waxed and is now getting a last buffing. And is now going to be under wraps in preparation for the unveiling and blessing March 7th, 2021. This will be good for the sisters, good for Lord University, and good for the world. When the sculpture is unveiled, you will see an approachable Mother Adelaide on a small plaza identified by surrounding ceramic tile. She fingers her Franciscan rosary with her left hand. She reaches out and holds a potted evergreen in her right hand and looks as a friend with vision at what has been and what will be. And that's the end of a bronze story. The story of how a class assignment brought a student and teacher together to build a partnership and friendship that would create a monument to a woman of vision, Mother Mary Adelaide Sandusky. <laughs>